Hello, everyone, and welcome to World History Part 2. My name is Dr. Philip Travis, and I will be your instructor throughout this course. Very excited about this course, and I think that uh, you'll really enjoy uh, this class. And I'll talk a little bit about the image that you see here in just a moment. So a little bit about the class, what to expect. This, this class really is charting the roots of the modern world. And even though it technically starts with something like 1600 to present, it's really more like 1400 to present. In this course, we're going to look at the Protestant Reformation and how that transformed um, governments, how it led to conflicts that created really the modern fabric of international law in the nation-state system. We'll be looking at European exploration and colonization, imperialism and, uh, throughout the world and how this has shaped the world. We will look at the significant and important uh, Islamic empires like the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Safafid Empire, for example, that uh, were very, very dominant throughout this period of time and very much shaped um, the development of the Mediterranean region, of areas of Asia and also Europe. We'll be looking at the development in China of significant, um, significant cultural and state developments in China, and also the ramifications of imperialism as it affects China in the 1800s. We'll be looking at the Revolutionary Age, the French Revolution particularly, and how the French Revolution really sows the seeds or sowed the seeds for the modern world. And of course, in the 21st, in the 20th century, we will be looking at the world wars. We'll be looking at uh, the decline of the old world colonial powers. We'll look at the Cold War, globalization. We'll look at the rise of fascism in Europe, uh, the Second World War, the Atomic Age, and so on. So I think you'll find this a really fun and fascinating course. The first thing we are going to look at in the course is the Protestant Reformation. And this week's reading is a shorter reading than, um, than some of our other readings from our text. And, and it's not the first, I should say, it's not the first chapter in the book. Uh, we'll be looking at the first chapter of the book, chapter 16, I believe it is. Uh, we'll be looking at the, the, the first chapter in the book um, next week. We're going to start with chapter 18 this week, which deals with uh, the Protestant Reformation. What to expect in this class? So first of all, every week you'll receive a video announcement like this from me. And I want everybody to watch these video announcements. And as a result of that, I offer extra credit uh, associated with these video announcements. Every time I do a video announcement, and the idea with this, I'm going to catch you up to uh, speed on, on, on some items that are important relating to assignments in the class. But I use these video announcements also as a way to sort of share interesting information about history. In this case, it's going to relate to the photo that you see here. And all you have to do to earn your bonus points, uh, you'll see in the, uh, in the assignment areas, the, the content module area, um, you will see um, an extra credit discussion board. And all you have to do is post a summary of the factoid that I mentioned no later than Wednesday by midnight, and you earn bonus points. And at the end of the term, the bonus points are all added up, and they're added to a test score at the end of the term. So every week you'll have one of these video announcements. In addition to that, every week I provide you with video lectures, and the video lectures um, are designed to um, provide insight and notes on the material that we're reading about and covering. And a lot of times it's in greater depth than what you actually read about. Sometimes it's, it's, it's more similar to what you read about. Sometimes it's just a portion of what you read about. Sometimes it's even in greater depth. This week, uh, the lectures are in significantly greater depth than what you'll get in the reading. And so please watch those lectures because not only will they help you learn the material, they are also the basis for quizzes and tests in this class. So every week, video lectures just like this, every week, uh, video announcements just like this, every week, video lectures that you find in the content modules area. The way the course will work 
every week I will publish the next week's module. You find the modules in the content area. So go to the content area and it'll open up the visible modules for you. But all of the modules are not open at once. I open them weekly, and so the week runs from Monday to Sunday, and so every weekend around Saturday or Sunday, usually Sunday night, I don't usually publish them on Saturday because I want you still focused on the assigned week, but usually Sunday night, you'll see the next week published, and then you can go in there and you can view the materials for the week. And uh, the materials you find in each of those weekly module areas are things like the readings and assignments, uh, a discussion forum if there's one assigned, any quiz assignment, study guides for tests, prompts for the paper. In this class, in this class, you will have three exams, a series of quizzes, you'll have some discussion forums that are graded, and then you will also have one essay that is written towards the end of the term, and more information will be um, forthcoming about that essay. The essay is not long. It's like six to 700 words. And we'll talk more about that as we move forward in the course. So the image that you see here relates actually to the subject of our, of our, um, you know, the subject of our um, reading and our lectures this week. And that's the Protestant Reformation. What you're looking at, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel all over the world. I've been to every continent except for Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. Um, I have no plans to go to Antarctica anytime soon. Though maybe a cruise there would be fun. Uh, but certainly um, Africa, Australia, and other parts of the world uh, that I haven't yet been to are high on my list. But I've been really fortunate to be able to travel the world. And in these travels, I will share with you um, elements from these travels during the course photos that I've taken, like the one here. I took this photo. Uh, I also have a number of videos that I will share from you about areas of the world that are, you know, pertinent to um, what we're learning um, in the class. So we'll, you'll, you'll be seeing a number of videos relating to the Renaissance, the French Revolution, the Protestant Re Reformation, the World Wars, and so on as we move forward in the course. What you're looking at here is the, is the famous church, St. Peter's, in the Vatican, and atop it, the Grand Basilica. Uh, and of course, in front of it is an Egyptian obelisk, an example of the European um, plunder of, of Egypt, which occurred over hundreds of years in, um, in ancient Rome. If you travel to the modern city of Rome, you find these ancient Egyptian obelisks throughout the city. They're almost like... Um, um, landmarks, that signposts, if you will, that help people understand the parts of the city they're in. But these are ancient Egyptian obelisks. The basilica that you see, that large dome that you see um, up here, was built during the age of the Protestant Reformation. The building of that basilica was so costly that it led the Catholic Church, which controlled a large region in Central Europe known as the Holy Roman Empire, to raise taxes. And the raising of those taxes uh, was done largely through the, the practice of selling indulgences. The selling of, of indulgences was a practice that was very commonplace in the Middle Ages. It was a way that the, the Catholic Church, which was the dominant political power in Europe at the time, it was the way that the Catholic Church um, funded projects and raised money. What an indulgence was, was basically um, an individual um, providing a donation, a payment to the Catholic Church, and in exchange, the Catholic Church, which had asserted itself not only as a political authority in Europe, but also as um, the spiritual authority in Europe, the Catholic Church would in turn um, suggest that it might help to speed an individual's soul through purgatory and to heaven. And so this was designed to uh, help raise money to improve the Vatican and to build this magnificent uh, cathedral in Vatican City in the Rome, in Rome, the Vatican City in Rome. That development led directly to the Protestant Reformation because, of course, Martin Luther, one of the figures leading the Protestant Reformation, 
with the usage of things like the Gutenberg printing press, reformers in places like the Holy Roman Empire, which made up the area uh, which will later become Germany, those reformers began translating and, and, and reading the Bible in the vernacular, in the language that they spoke and understood. And nowhere in there did Martin Luther see anything relating to the selling of indulgences. And so this became one of the areas that uh, reformers like Martin Luther began to use to criticize the Catholic Church for effectively corruption and for abusing its power. And this ultimately led to the Protestant Reformation. Okay. So that's the factoid for this week. So summarize that in the in the little extra credit discussion board that I have posted for you. There's also another little video in there, and I'm going to put that in there too. And I'm going to maybe give us, because it's a little bit long this week, I'll give us three bonus points this week for, for completing each of these activities. There's also, um, there's also some, some points this week that are going to be awarded in the form of quiz points, but everybody will get all of the, all of the assigned points for this. Um, and this is the class assessment. So make sure you take uh, the assessment quiz this week. You'll see this in um, the content area this week. Um, it is an assessment assignment. It's not meant, for, you don't have to worry about getting all the points. It's designed to assess our understanding of the historical subject um, in the historical dis discipline prior to the start of the class. And there'll be another one taken at the end of the term. And um, you receive bonus points, five bonus points for that, um, for completing the assessment, both the post and uh, the pre and the post assessment. So please make sure you take that this week as well. Let's have a great week, um, everyone. I will see you this week in the discussion board. Introduce yourselves, and um, I'll see you in there. Email me if you have any questions.